Good day, everyone. My name is Dr. Avlin Udi Costa, and I'm an assistant professor in the zoology discipline of the School of Biological Sciences and Biotechnology, Goa University. I will be conducting this session on the introduction to genotoxicology, where I will be talking about some basic concepts of genotoxicity, DNA damage, DNA repair, as well as some tests which can be conducted uh, for genotoxicity testing. So to begin with, I would like to talk about the basic concept of toxicology, which is the study of the adverse effects of chemical, physical and biological agents on living organisms and the ecosystem, which includes the prevention and amelioration of such effects. So in toxicology, we study how a particular substance, whether it's of a chemical origin or physical or a biological uh, substance, where, uh, it causes some type of damage in living organisms, including human beings and other organisms which are even found in the environment. Uh, how exactly these toxicants move through the body, uh, which parts of the body they affect, what biomolecules they interact with, and how they are also going to be excreted out of the body, as well as certain other methods of lessening or ameliorating these effects. All of these can be studied under the purview of toxicology. And if you have to talk about this term called toxicity, it is the degree to which a substance can harm or damage an organism. So toxicity can depend on the target tissue with which uh, a particular substance uh, affects it. If a substance is affecting the nervous system, then we refer to that type of toxicity as neurotoxicity. If it affects the liver, then we refer to that type of toxicity as hepatotoxicity. Similarly, if it affects the kidneys, we refer to it as nephrotoxicity. And obviously, if it affects the genetic material, that is the DNA or the RNA, we refer to it as genotoxicity. A lot of these studies have been done where uh, a lot of scientists try to figure out or try to find out whether a substance uh, affects any one of these organ systems in the body. And they can actually, uh, after doing these tests, they can say that a particular substance, like for example cadmium, uh, they say that it is, supposed, uh, it is neurotoxic or it is hepatotoxic or it's, uh, genotoxic depending on the types of studies that they do. So they study the target organ they do a number of uh, tests which will ascertain whether there is some damage done to that particular organ and then they confirm that that particular substance is doing this type of toxicity. So this is the focus of our topic that is uh, genotoxicology. So specifically I'll be talking about genotoxicity. So genotoxicity as per the definition it would be the degree to which a substance can damage the structure or the function of DNA. It could be DNA, it could even be RNA. Uh, it is basically affecting the genetic material. So genotoxicity refers to the processes that alter the structure, the sequences or the segregation of DNA and uh, it is not necessarily going to be associated with mutagenicity. I will be giving you a, a brief idea as to these uh, terms that is genotoxicity, mutagenicity and carcinogenicity as well. And uh, uh, these terms should not be confused with each other. I will be talking about that in just a bit. The number of compounds, there are a number of compounds which are known to alter the gene sequences or even uh, distort uh, uh, DNA uh, as well as damage DNA like for example cadmium which is a heavy metal, UV radiation which is coming from the sun and ethidium bromide which is a chemical routinely used in molecular biology studies. So uh, to uh, understand uh, genotoxicology, this would be a branch of toxicology which would be identifying and analyzing the action of agents, that is substances, with the toxicity directed towards the hereditary components of the living systems, that is it affects the DNA or it affects the RNA. And uh, these effects can be assessed by measuring the interaction of the agents with the DNA or through the assessment of DNA repair or the production of gene mutations or chromosomal alteration. So there are a number of tests which we can also do to find out uh, whether a particular substance is causing damage to the DNA because obviously DNA cannot be observed with the naked eye so we need to do some type of molecular tests or we need to do some type of bioassays which can help us uh, find out whether a substance is indeed genotoxic or not. So what is the importance of genotoxicity or genotoxicology is that the, the most important and common and unifying feature is that all organisms have the, nucleic, uh, the nuclear material and uh, all living organisms use the similar genetic systems, right? So in the form of DNA and RNA. And obviously all of our information, that is all of our proteins 
and uh, whatever metabolism that we do, everything, all of these instructions come from our genome. So it's the genome that is the one that will be uh, producing certain proteins, it will be producing certain enzymes and hormones that will be uh, specifying certain, um, uh, certain metabolic functions in our body. So all the genomes are encoded in nucleic acid, so it's going to be in the form of DNA and then DNA will be transcribed into RNA, where the RNA would then be translated into proteins and it will do that specific function. So it is of importance to understand the toxicity that is being done to DNA because if DNA is going to be damaged by a certain substance which I have given you the examples of, it could also affect the way in which the DNA functions. It could affect that information which is there within the genome. That DNA, if it is damaged or if it is altered, uh, it would not be able to produce a, 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 a correct mRNA. It would be a, 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 an altered mRNA or an mRNA would not be produced at all. And so if, if there is a faulty mRNA, that mRNA would be translated into a protein which is also faulty or no protein could be produced at all. And as a result, that's when you know you can get certain types of uh, disorders and diseases which could ultimately le uh, lead to uh, very serious types of diseases like cancer. So the simplest complete functional unit in the DNA is referred to as the gene. So it's the gene that is the one that is going to be transcribing into an uh, mRNA and getting translated into a protein. So if the genes are going to get affected, definitely you can say that the mRNA is going to be, uh, the mRNA which is going to be produced is going to be affected as well as the proteins uh, thereof. And uh, mutations can therefore alter the product and it will, uh, you know, alter the function and it will not be able to do the specific function that is required to be done in the body. So genetic alterations over time, they can lead to mutations and ultimately it can lead to uh, cancer as well. And uh, as I told you that uh, these are, this is a stepwise process which uh, takes place over a, a long period of time. Okay, so you do not get uh, cancer happening within, uh, you know, within a few days time uh, just because you're exposed to a, a carcinogenic substance. This actually takes a lot of time because the cells which are there, they need to be uh, they 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 become abnormal. They ex they escape you know cell senescence. They escape the uh, the the failsafe mechanisms. I would say of uh, uh, you know of um, of a normal cell, and as a result, they get transformed into a cell that just keeps on reproducing and grows abnormally, and uh, that can then start invading other parts of the body, which we refer to as malignancy and metastasis, where the cancer starts to spread, and that is just because of uh, some damage that had been done to the DNA and this DNA, uh, this damaged DNA, uh, uh, it, it, the damage accumulated and it uh, kept on uh, reproducing and you know as a result we got this formation of cancer. So coming to the important point is these important terms which you have to make a very, uh, which you have to make a distinction within that is genotoxicity, mutagenicity and carcinogenicity. So these terms should not be used interchangeably. Okay. And uh, so if you have to talk about genotoxicity, it refers to the damage that is not going to be transmissible from cell to cell or generation to generation. So it is just the damage that is being done to the DNA. That damage can be repaired. It can be repaired. Uh, and uh, so, you know, the, the cell can, you know, either undergo apoptosis to as to completely eradicate that damage or there will be some cell repair mechanisms which can repair the damaged DNA. Uh, so this is what we talk about, you know, it is just the, uh, the damage that is being done to the, uh, the DNA uh, within cells. So mutagenicity on the other hand refers to the production of transmissible genetic alteration. So the damage which has been done cannot be repaired and because of some mechanism, uh, they escape the, the DNA repair uh, machinery and as a result, whatever uh, cells are being propagated from that parent cell into the daughter cells, the, those same uh, damaged DNA gets propagated into the daughter cells. So that at that point of time, we refer to this as mutagenicity. So this can refer to the uh, alteration of the base pairs, which are not going to be uh, rectified and which are not going to be repaired. And as a result, they get transmitted. And carcinogenicity refers to the cellular events that occur due to irreversible DNA damage that lead to uncontrolled cell growth and cell division. So as I told you, the cells will be getting transformed from normal cells into very abnormal cells that uh, do not follow the normal, uh, the rules governing, you know, the cell cycle and uh, cell metabolism and all of these things. Okay, so these terms have to be used very, very carefully. We cannot interchange these terms. Definitely, uh, genotoxicity can lead to a mutagenic condition and mutagenicity can lead to a carcinogenic uh, condition. But we cannot say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
genotoxicity is the same as carcinogenicity and mutagenicity. So these terms have to be used very, very carefully. Right, so this is the definition of uh, genotoxicity and uh, mutagenicity because there's a lot of uh, uh, online sources which uh, confuse these two terms. So as I told you, genotoxicity refers to the damage that is being done to the DNA as well as certain uh, apparatus that govern uh, certain genetic uh, mechanisms uh, like you know the fidelity of the genome, the spindle apparatus, the, the enzymes which are involved in uh, cell replication and, uh, and the cell cycle. Whereas mutagenicity refers to the damage that is going to be passed on to the daughter cells. So this is one very important distinction that has to be made. If we have to talk about the history of genotoxicology, the uh, uh, DNA damage has been studied in, as mutagenicity uh, of uh, various substances, particularly uh, of X-rays and certain chemicals. And these are some of the people who have studied, these are some of the scientists I mean, who have studied them in different organisms like Drosophila, they studied in certain plants like uh, Tetiscantia and it, uh, even in mice. And uh, then over the next 20 years, uh, the genetic toxicologists investigated how these mutations occur, what are the problems that occur in chromosomes as, as a result of this and how then they are getting transmitted from one generation to the next using a variety of substances. So if you look at the literature that is available online, you will find n number of papers that are available on the genotoxicity of different different substances which are found either in nature or you know chemically synthesized and even radiation a lot of studies are already available on this so it is it uh, it, it would be helpful if you all could also go online and search for some of these papers and try to figure out what are the exact mechanisms of these uh, substances and how they damage dna and uh, uh, over time there uh, they, there were also a lot of uh, uh, advances in certain techniques which have been used one of the most famous techniques which was used for uh, to genotoxicity testing was that of uh, the uh, the Ames test which was devised by Bruce Ames in 1975 and I will be talking about this in uh, in another video of uh, how this particular test is going to be conducted and uh, with the with the advent of this particular testing you know this was a major development in gen genetic toxicology and a number of tests have then been devised you know for uh, testing of uh, dna damage in different organisms as, as well as in different cells so we have different tests which are done routinely over here uh, in uh, uh, in in mice or uh, in mice or in, uh, in in vitro cultures or in drosophila or even in plants we do certain tests like the comet assay the micronucleus test the chromosomal aberration test the sister chromatid exchange assay and many others are there which can uh, which are used routinely to test the genotoxicity of different compounds so in summary Genotoxicology is a study of toxic effects of substances on the hereditary material which includes the mechanism of toxicity of these substances as well as the repair of the damage that is being done by them. And a number of techniques are available for conducting genotoxicity tests that are being routinely used by a lot of scientists all around the world. And in the next video, I'll be talking about uh, DNA damage, DNA repair, and other things as well. Thank you.